when you hear god's word resonance happens within you that something that has been hidden because what does the bible say colossians chapter 2 in him is hidden all so it is hidden something that is hidden it gets resonated and becomes active in your life so you're not you're not receiving a download from external you're not receiving a download because pastor sam released the word you're receiving the download because it is within you but it resonated within your spirit and now from that spirit the word is bringing light everything that you need in this life for a life of godliness is already within you do you know that god does not need to bless you anymore because you already have everything within you because you are born of the same word that the word jesus was born of i just want to remind each and every one of us that we are here because of god's grace none of us have done enough good to be qualified for his love none of us but we are here because of his grace it is because of his grace that we are made we have been made righteous amen isn't that good news we are not righteous because of the things that we did we are not righteous because of the spiritual discipline that we have although we need to have spiritual discipline in our lives like prayer and reading the word so that we can position ourselves to receive from god but it's not the spiritual discipline that has qualified us to receive from god it is purely the grace of god that is upon our lives purely the grace of god are you with me today it's the grace of god that we are here today it's the grace of god that we know jesus it's the grace of god that we can even pray it's the grace of god that that we can even understand the revelations of god it is the grace of god that enables us to read god's word it is god's grace and grace and grace alone amen let's not forget that we're here because of his grace without his grace we would have been lost it's because of, because of his grace grace there's only one condition for grace to work do you know what that is i know you've heard that grace is unmerited favor yes it is unmerited favor because it comes to us without without looking at any of our merits yes but it requires a condition for it to work there is a condition for grace to work you know what's the condition the bible says he gives grace to the humble he gives more grace to the humble without having a posture of humility you cannot receive grace because god can have the best gift for you and he can give it to you but without you having the posture of humility to receive it it will still be in the hands of god yeah i can buy you the the next version of iphone package it and give it to you but if you're not willing to receive it it'll still be in my hands you have to receive it for grace to work it requires humility say with me humility yes it requires humility it requires humility jesus grew in wisdom and in stature because he was humble the bible says he was humble he emptied himself he emptied himself and he took the form of a servant he came in the likeness of a man he emptied himself he was so humble that when he was operating on the earth he was not operating as god he was operating as a man who was completely dependent on god and his power You know many times when we see Jesus we think oh you yeah Jesus can do that because he's the son of God no just as much Jesus came to reveal us who the perfect God is he also came to reveal to us what it means to be a man yeah he came to reveal to you what it means to be a man When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness the devil comes to him and tells him are you 
the son of god if you are the son of god turn this stone into bread do you know there's no sin if you turn a stone into a bread it's not a sin i've read the bible there's not not one verse that says that shall not turn a stone into bread so the temptation was not for the stone to become bread the temptation was for jesus to doubt his identity of being a son that's why that's why the the devil was asking him are you sure you're the son of god are you sure you are the son of you you are the son of god are you sure but look at jesus response he does not say son shall not live by bread alone he does not say son shall not live he says man shall not live by bread alone are you man good news for you if you're a man good news for you because jesus is telling you that he is operating right now not as a son of god he's operating as a man as a mere human and he's saying if i could defeat and beat the devil by being a mere hum- human trusting in the power of god overflowing in the power of god so can you so can you jesus said man shall not live by bread alone not but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god but do you know that jesus the form that he took is not the form that you have right now no let's read philippians chapter 2 If you have your bible turn with me to Philippians chapter 2 it's in uh, the New Testament for those of you who don't read we have enough grace for you Philippians chapter 2 it comes after Ephesians Ephesians is also in the New Testament okay Philippians chapter 2 are you with me yes. okay let's read from verse 6 who though he was in the form of god this is talking about whom Jesus Jesus was in the form of God but what did he do he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped though he was in the form of God he did not count equality he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped what does it mean that though he was in the form of God he never boasted he never took advantage of his godhead he never took advantage of his god head when the devil came to him and said are you the son of god abhi dikhata hu main i'll show it to you right now you know in in the roads of delhi when people fight they want to sh- show and convince each other who they are you have no idea who i am you don't know who my dad is because there's so much of insecurity <laughs> that people need to prove who they are but jesus never never had to prove to anybody who he was was he a son of god but never at once he had to prove himself to anybody that he was a son of god what's the next verse philippians chapter 2 verse 7 but made himself what's the word oh what's the word but made himself nothing he made himself nothing even though he was he had a form of godhead in him he made himself nothing taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form next verse he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on the cross he humbled himself he humbled himself jesus came in the form of the fallen man he didn't come in the form of the perfect man he came in the form of the fallen man though he did not have any sin in him though he did not sin he came in the form of a fallen man he came in the form of an earthly man but do you know that you are not an earthly 
person. You're not an earthly person. 2 Corinthians 5 or 17 says, He who is in Christ is a new creation. Meaning, a new species that was never before. That existed, that did not exist before. You are a new species. If you are in Jesus, you are a new species. You are not like Adam. You're not like Adam. Yeah. Jesus was not just balancing the books on the cross. You know, Adam, Adam caused so much of loss in the ledger of God. So Jesus was just, oh, let me just do enough so that it will balance out. Jesus was not balancing the books. He was doing much more. Yeah. Say with me, much more. Much more. That's why if you read Romans chapter 5 from verse 17 onwards, you will find this word again and again, much more. Jesus did much more than what Adam lost. Jesus gained for you much more than what Adam had lost in the garden. You are a much more. You are a much more. But for you to be a much more, Jesus had to become that. He had to come in the form of a fallen man. He had to come in the form of a fallen man. Don't ever think, don't ever compare yourself with the earthly ministry of Jesus because you are a much more. Yeah, you are a much more. You're not created in the likeness of Adam. Jesus is known as the last Adam. You know why he's known as the last Adam? Not second Adam. He's known as the last Adam because Adam's legacy is over. Jesus finishes the legacy of Adam and it's done. Now you are not born in the legacy of Adam. Yeah, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're still holding on to the genetic, genetic failure of Adam, but you're not created. You have been recreated into something new. You've been recreated from something new. You know what you're recreated from? Put First Peter chapter 1, verse 20 onwards. Are you with me, guys? Don't miss it. Be attentive, be diligent. Don't miss it. First Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Okay, next verse. Next verse, verse 22. Oh man, I'm missing it. Let's go to verse 24. Yeah, are you with me? All flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls. Next verse. But the word of the Lord remains forever. Say with me, all flesh is like grass. Do you know what it means to be a grass? It's today, here and tomorrow, gone. All flesh is like grass. It will wither away. But the word of the Lord remains forever. So I, when I used to read this verse, without understanding any context of it, I thought, man, who am I? I'm just like grass. I'm here today and I'm gone tomorrow. But this is not what it says. It says all flesh is like grass. You are not, yeah, you're not born of flesh. How do I know this? Read verse 23. This is the context. Verse 23 is the context. The, what does it say? Since you have been born again. Say with me. You have been born again. You are born again. You were born of the flesh, but now you are born again. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. What did we read earlier? That all flesh is like? grass and the only thing that remains is the word of God. You are born of that same word of God that will remain forever and ever. You are born of God's way. You have been born again of God's way. So you're not born in the form of Adam. Even though when you were born, you were born in that likeness, but you were born again through the living and abiding word of God. 
you're born in god's word you're born from god's word jesus when he was born he took the form of a servant he took the form of adam so that what adam lost in the garden jesus restored everything back now your likeness is not the jesus who came in his earthly ministry yeah na 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 your born again experience is not going back to jesus who was in his earthly ministry that was a process that only jesus had to finish not for us it's not for you do you know the bible says in first john chapter 4 just like he is so are we just like he is so are we in this world just like who just like jesus so when we think that oh jesus you know how jesus was that's how i am we think about his earthly ministry and we begin to compare our lives with his earthly ministry although his earthly ministry was great and glorious we can't even reach that and we get disappointed but i'm telling you there is much more your starting point is not the starting point of jesus when he started his ministry your starting point in ministry is much more than what jesus had to begin yeah your starting point in the ministry is not even the starting point of your forefathers their ceiling has become your floor yeah the growth of the church is like passing the baton to the next generation where the next generation is stronger is moving more uh, moving in much more faith moving in much more strength and moving in much more glory wow we keep comparing ourselves with the first century church oh i wish the first century church we were like the first century church can you tell me which of the first century church was perfect which one had no issues they had all the issues that we are talking about today they had issues of credibility they had sexual immorality they had issues of finances they had issues of being too charismatic less charismatic they had issues of everything there was imbalances all throughout the first century church but what we don't realize that it is jesus it is jesus who is growing the church so if it is jesus who is growing your church tell me after 2000 years of the church being grown will it get better or will it get worse na 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 I'm not talking about your pastor growing the church if it is Jesus who is growing the church because Jesus said I will build my church so if Jesus is building his church I'm saying think about in the span of 2000 years will the church get better or will the church get worse yeah when we have such a negative view of the church we are actually putting the work of Jesus to of no effect it's not the pastors who are building the church it's not the bishops and the deacons they they are just hands and feet it is jesus who is building his church it is jesus who is building his church that's why i'm going to tell you that your starting point in life is not the starting point of jesus jesus has promoted you to such an extent that you have gone further much more that's why jesus said you shall do much greater things than i have done It is unfair to compare your life with the earthly ministry of Jesus. It is unfair. Because you have been given much more. You have been given much more. Second one is 5 or 16. Wow. Love this verse. Say with me from now on. 
what does it mean from now on like right now from today today you change your perspective how you see yourself okay from now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh no one means yeah, no one you regard no one not even yourself not even your neighbor you regard no one according to the flesh now look at this even though we once regarded christ according to the flesh we regard him thus no longer what is paul saying paul is saying the jesus whom you know from his earthly ministry that's not how we see him today his earthly ministry was for a period how many years for how many years was jesus here on the earth how many years 33 and a half years right 33 and a half years for 33 and a half jesus was on the earth now after he died and he rose up he ascended into heaven where is he right now where is he right now R at the right hand of the father for how many years is jesus at the right hand of the father A after the ascension more than 2000 years which one should be your bigger reference 2000 years of jesus ruling and reigning on the on the throne or your 33 and a half years when he was on the earth which one should be your reference jesus on the throne or jesus on the earth what should be your reference jesus on the cross or jesus on the throne what should be your reference do you see the do you see do you see the gap the bible says we are just like he is does not say we are just like he was we are just like he is where is he today is he on the throne or is he on the earth is he on the throne or is he sweating and working his way out he is on the throne so just like he is so are you on this earth that means he is seated on the throne after defeating every enemy so you should be operating on the earth as if you have defeated every enemy you're not operating like jesus you know who 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 got tired and who slept after a long ministry all the all the things that jesus did was glorious it blows my mind but what i'm saying is you have been your starting point is much more much more jesus he started from where adam left and he restored everything that adam lost but for you he gave you much more much more do you know that jesus dying on the cross was enough for humanity salvation that is death was enough for humanity salvation but he did not just die he was resurrected because dying on the cross would have got you your forgiveness but resurrection power has given you indestructible life it has given you power to indestructible life do you get it see forgiveness of sins would have just restored everything that adam had lost jesus blood would have just restored everything that adam adam had lost but you, he has given you resurrection power much more much more tell yourself there is much more put your name and say sam there is much more there is much more there is much more yeah so you're not born in the likeness of adam fallen adam you have been born again born again in the likeness of god's word god's word you have been recreated by god's word and your dna is god's word what is your dna god's word do you know that the bible says in john chapter 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was 
God, I, how many of you believe that, you know, Bible is God's word? Bible is God's word? Can I tell you something? Bible has God's word. There's a difference. Bible has God's word. What is the difference between Bible is God's word and Bible has God's word? What's the difference? All scriptures are God breath. But for you to receive God's word, you need to search them. It has God's word. So if you just keep this Bible under your pillow and believe that all demons will go and you will stop having nightmares, nah, nothing is going to happen. You have to sit and read through the scriptures and find God's word. Bible has God's word. It has God's word. Does that make sense to you? But do you know who has God's word? Who else has God's word? You have. You are born of God's word. That means the entire knowledge that this Bible has, which for 2,000 years the church is still not, has not been able to consume it because there's so much knowledge. We've been preaching from the same Bible. All the knowledge lies in you. Yeah. All God's divine knowledge lies within you. Man, you are looking at me with such unbelief. Let me show you a scripture, Colossians chapter 2. Do you have it? In whom are hidden all the treasures. How much treasures? How much treasures? All the treasures. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Whom is this talking about? Jesus. In Jesus, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Where is Jesus? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me. All, all wisdom and knowledge is in Jesus and that Jesus is in you. That means you have access to all wisdom and all knowledge. Yeah. You have access. Okay, let me show you another verse. James chapter 1. Verse 21. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. And listen to this. Receive with meekness. The what word? The implanted word. What is James saying? He's saying there is an implanted word inside of you. There's a word inside of you. You are created from God's word. There's an implanted word. What, what do you mean by implanted? It's planted within you. And James is saying, receive from that implanted word. So when you're hearing a sermon, when you're he reading through the scriptures, what is happening is you're not receiving externally. You're receiving from within. Something that is spoken that you hear from your ears triggers something inside and it releases life. That's why the Bible says his word is like, it's in Psalms, I'm forgetting the verse. His word is like light. Uh, the word of God is like, not, not that one, not like a light and a lamp. But the other was entrance of my word. The entrance of my word. Can you find that verse? The entrance of my word is like light. So what I'm trying to say is you are born of God's word. So when you, you are not trying to learn God's word externally. But you are trying to hear God's word that will trigger something inside of you. Because you already have that word within you. Can you read Psalm 119, was 130? 119, was 130. 
the unfolding of your words gives light the unfolding of your word gives light you have god's word so when you're hearing god's word it triggers something inside of you the same word that you're hearing it is within you it gets activated are you making sense am i making sense i don't know if you're making sense yeah <laughs> it activates within you hearing god's word when you hear the voice of god it activates within you the word that you have received it activates that dimension within you have you heard of the term resonance in physics it is like you know every everything in the universe has a is vibrating at a frequency so so for example if i can if i can send a send a sound in the same frequency of that frequency of that physical thing i can make it vibrate even further more so for example some people say that the jericho wall happened due to resonance i don't know that but just to help you understand so just imagine the people of israel they shouted at the same frequency at the frequency of the wall not saying that this has happened but just to explain the concept okay now when they shouted at the same frequency of the frequency of the wall maybe god matched the frequency uh the frequency of their shout he matched it with the frequency of the wall and the wall vibrated to a point that it came crashing down when you hear god's word resonance happens within you that something that has been hidden because what does the bible say colossians chapter 2 in him is hidden all so it is hidden something that is hidden it gets resonated and becomes active in your life so you're not you're not receiving a download from external you're not receiving a download because pastor sam released the word you're receiving the download because it is within you but it resonated within your spirit and now from that spirit the word is bringing light everything that you need in this life for a life of godliness is already within you do you know that God does not need to bless you anymore because you already have everything within you because you are born of the same word that the word Jesus was born of. You're born of the same DNA, you're born of the same essence. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 3 that you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in Jesus. You are blessed. You are already blessed. Everything is within you. but it needs to get activated it needs to get triggered it needs to resonate within you that's why when you read certain scriptures something happens within you that that resonance is what we call revelation that resonance that resonance of where the frequency of the scripture that you're reading matches the frequency of the word that is within you within you and it starts moving inside of you that's when you call revelation That's when don't get satisfied with information you need to move from information to revelation information will not change anything information only will give you this high it will puff you up but revelation will change from within because it will resonate within you change your heart change your mind it will completely consume you from within any word of god that you have heard does not change your heart will not change your circumstance let me say this again any prophetic word that you have received if it cannot change your heart if it hasn't changed your heart it cannot change your circumstances because everything in the kingdom flows inside out it's not outside in it is inside out god always functions inside out see mere humans humans in the likeness of adam i'm not talking about you I'm talking about humans in the likeness of adam they function outside in so they can get into a room and feel feel a certain feeling like they can feel sad if they can walk into a room they can feel 
gloomy if the weather is gloomy. Why? Because they let outside circumstances influence their internal being. But God is not like that. God is inside out. He does not let outside circumstances influence his internal being. He lets his internal being influence his outside circumstances. That's why even when he sees darkness, he can speak light. See, if you, if you walked into a room and if there was darkness and you said there's no darkness, there's light, people will call you a liar. If you say something that you don't see, what will people call you? People will call you a liar. But God is not a liar. What he says is the truth. If he sees the darkness and he says light, what he says takes more precedence than what he sees. You're not getting this. No, 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 no. You're not getting this for your life. It's not a revelation yet. God can see darkness and he can still speak light and not be a liar because what he says is taking more precedence than what he sees because he functions inside out. Now, as a child of God, how does that apply to you? As a child of God, you can see sickness in your body and you can still speak the life of Jesus because you're not letting the sickness affect your internal being, internal state of mind. You are operating by faith like God operates. So what you speak takes more precedence than what you see. So when you speak what God is speaking, although you cannot see, when you speak what God is speaking, you're not a liar because God is not a liar. Yeah, it's deep. Think about it. You're having a sickness and you say, I am sick, but God says you are healed. Whom will you believe? Your experience or will you believe God? When you call yourself discarded and God says, I have chosen you. I've appointed you before the foundation of the earth. I have accepted you. Whom do you choose to believe? Who is the liar? But pastor, I don't see it. You don't have to see it. You don't have to. What is faith if it can be seen? We call ourselves people of faith, right? If you're going to believe only after you see, why would you call it faith? So don't wait for things to change so that your words begin to change. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't wait for circumstances to change so that you can become joyful. Don't wait for circumstances to change so that you can operate in thanksgiving. You can start operating in thanksgiving and the circumstances will change because you're operating by faith. Because you're not moved by what you see, you're moved by what you say. Because what God says is the truth. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. You are created of the same word of God. Do you know that this same word created the entire cosmos? Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, By faith we understand that everything that we see came from the invisible by the word of God. Everything that you see has been brought by God's word. That same word has brought in everything from the invisible realm into the visible realm. Yeah. That word is within you. You have that word within you. Do you know that you don't need to remain a victim another day in your life? You don't have to play victim. You don't have to live a life of limitations. Because the same word that created the entire cosmos is within you. Do you understand the, the potential of that word that is within you that has not been tapped yet? All that it requires is for that word to get activated. 
That's why when you read God's word and when you pray, what is happening is resonance is happening. You're letting the scripture resonate within the word that is within you. Ah, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You keep staying on the scripture and you eat the scripture as if it is bread to you. What is happening is resonance happens. It resonates within your spirit. And then one day you have a revelation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why am I worried about this? I don't have to be worried about this. I have a shepherd who takes care of me. So who's stopping your breakthrough? Do you know who's stopping your breakthrough? Yeah, well, we, we do want to blame the devil for everything. But Jesus has given you the power. The power of his word is within you. You have God's word. You know, in... In the Acts, in the book of Acts, they talk about how the church kept growing and the Lord kept adding people, kept adding people to the church. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, keeps on saying how the Lord kept adding people to the church. But the equation, the mathematical equation, changes from addition to multiplication. Suddenly, if I'm not wrong, it's in Acts chapter 6. You know what happened? For the equation to change from addition to multiplication, the word says, and the word of God increased. And the disciples multiplied. The word of God increased. And the disciples multiplied. Word of God increased. Oh wow, thank you. And the word of God continued to increase and the number of the disciples multiply you want to increase in your life the word of god needs to increase because the word that you have received has come in the form of a seed and that seed needs to increase and as it increases everything that god has deposited within you is there in that word he has deposited everything that you need for this life. It has been given to you in that word. You have received that word. When you said yes to Jesus, you said yes to his word. And that word has come to you. Let that word increase and grow. You don't need anybody coming to you externally. All that you require is for that word to grow. Word to grow. All our spiritual discipline is to activate within us that same power that God has. Do you understand why you need to read scriptures? Do you understand why you need to pray? It's not so that something will happen externally, but something inside of you will get triggered. Something inside of you will come alive. Do you know how they train elephants? Right when the elephants are like babies, they'll tie a chain around their neck and they'll put a stick. So the baby elephant will try setting himself free and cannot because it's small and the chain is big and the stick is strongly rooted. Now over years of conditioning of his mind, the baby elephant now, which has become a bigger elephant, still can be tamed by just putting a small chain and a stick. Because it realizes it has been conditioned to think that this chain is a bondage he cannot get out of. And that is what, what has happened to us Christians. But one day, something gets triggered and he breaks all his chain and starts walking and creating havoc. We call him the elephant has gone mad. The truth is the elephant hasn't gone mad. He's just understood his identity that day. He's just unlocked his power that day. He hasn't gone mad. You need to go mad. You need to go mad. The potential is within you. It needs to get unlocked. Do you even understand what God has done within you? Oh, 
sinful man. You have the same power that Jesus has. Same power. The power of resurrection to defeat, defeat death. Same power. We're not talking about sickness. We're not talking about cold and cancer. Power over cold and cancer. He, he has given you power over the enemy. You have the same power. You have the same authority that Jesus has. Because you are born of the same word. And that word is within you. It needs to increase. The word needs to increase. Amen. Whatever you're seeking is within you. It is within you. It is within you. It is within you. Amen. Let me just show you one principle. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. Oh, let's read from verse 19. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. So God brought animals to Adam and he's waiting to see what Adam would call them. So just imagine, animals came to Adam, dinosaurs, lions, big bears, elephants, they all came to Adam. Whom did they came to? Adam. What did Adam do? And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. So God was not doing quiz with him. Let me see if he can, you know, identify the right animal. You know, we do that with children, right? Oh, which one is that? A oh, dog. No, it's not a dog. It's a cat. He was not doing quiz with him. He was allowing Adam to exercise dominion. What was he doing? He was allowing Adam to exercise Dominion. Because whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. Whatever you call, whatever name you give to your situation, that becomes its name. No. Whatever you give the name to the situation that is coming against you, that becomes the name of that situation. So if you take your bill and you say, oh, this is such a huge bill, it becomes a huge bill. But if you take the same bill and somebody says, oh, pennies, it's a small bill, it remains a small bill. You take a condition in your body and say, I rebuke it. This, is, this has nothing to do in my life. I rebuke it, reject it. Get off. It will go off. But if you take that same condition and be like, oh, I can't do it. Oh, you will remain a victim all throughout your life. How did God create everything that is in the cosmos? By speaking. And God gave dominion to man so that they could dominate the entire cosmos by speaking. So you speak God's word. You're not just speaking positive things. It's not speaking positive things. You want to see the effect of your words to have the same power that it, it will have. If God was speaking, then you speak the same words that God is speaking. If you want the power of your words to have the same power that God would have when he speaks, then you speak the same word that God is speaking. 
How does God speak? When he sees darkness, he says light. When he sees sickness, what does he say? Healing. When he sees death, he sees life. So you say what God is saying, you will have the same result as if God spoke into your circumstances. Because you are echoing what God says. Hebrews 10 verse 23 says, holding fast to the confession of your faith. We understand confession only in terms of you know, confessing our sins. It's, an, it's a very negative term. But confession, the word comes from the Greek word homologia, which means repeating God's word. Meaning you listen to God's word and you're echoing the same. Repeating God's word. You cannot speak God's word without hearing. Do you know that? Yeah. You think you, think you can just speak God's word? No. You can only speak what you've heard. That's why when God caught Adam in the garden after they sinned, God asked him, who told you that you are naked? Because there was somebody telling him that he was naked. And God did not want him to know that he was naked. Because God was speaking another word opposite to the word of the devil that Adam did not listen. So if you're speaking God's word, you cannot speak on your strength. You can only speak what you've heard. Any word, any God's word that you're speaking is because you have heard within your spirit. So when you echo God's word, it will have the same impact that God would have when he speaks. If God said, let there be light, will there be light? In spite of all the darkness, will there be light? Then why don't you believe that when you echo God's word, his word will come forth? Why don't you believe? Isaiah chapter 54, show me that verse which says, the word of God that is sent forth, it will never return void. It will hit its target. When you speak God's word, you echo God's word, you will see the same power as if God has spoken. Isaiah 55 verse 11, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Yes. Speak God's word. Speak God's word. Why do you speak God's word? Because the word is within you. The word is within you. So you're not speaking something that is external, that you don't have. You're speaking what you have. You're speaking that is within you. That reality is within you, but it gets released by your speaking. And so 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says, because we have received the spirit of faith, we spoke because we believed. So if you believe, you say you are people of faith, then speak. Speak. What do you speak? God's word. Not just positive affirmation. Speak God's word. Speak God's word. So in a situation that is bothering you, you need to find God's word for that situation. You need to find an equivalent scripture to fight that situation and speak God's word till it begins to resonate in your heart until you start seeing change in your life. God's word. God's word is all that you need and you are born of that word. It will come forth. That's why God does not need to do anything anymore. He has blessed you with everything. He has blessed you with everything. Read with me, Psalm 103, verse 20. Do you know that you have angelic protection? God has assigned angels from heaven over your life. Aren't they ministering spirits sent out to those who inherit salvation? Hebrews chapter 1. So you have angelic spirits that God has assigned over your life to protect you. But the angels are activated by doing one thing. They are there but you can activate them into specific assignments. You know how they are activated? Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his. Why are the angels assigned to you? So that they will do his, do whose word? Do God's word. Obey the voice of his. So when do they get activated? When they hear the voice of his word, they need to obey the voice of his word so that they can do the word.
Can you hear anything? Do, do you hear a voice? Who gives voice to his word? Who gives voice to his word? You do. The word is within you. You give voice to his word and the angels will start operating to fulfill the word that he has released. So stay on his word. All that you need is his word. And you have his word because you are created from that word. But move from information to revelation. Let it resonate within you. Let it resonate within you. Let it move within you. Let it stir up within you. Hallelujah. The secret for the church to grow in Acts chapter 2 was not just the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came. But it was the word that increased. If the Holy Spirit is like the gun, the word is like the bullet. Some of us are just throwing blanks because the word is not there. So that's why the disciples said, as much as we devote ourselves to prayer, we will devote ourselves to the ministry of his word. In, in, especially in Christianity, we see extremes of it, right? People who only pray and people who only do scriptures. We need both. We need both. Because the word is the sword of the spirit. Prayer, you activate the spirit. And it's the word that makes it function. So if, this, if the Holy Spirit is like the gun, the word of God is like bullets. When you release the bullet, it has to function. It has to go through. That's why, the, that's why God said, my word will not go void. It shall not return back to me empty. It will accomplish its task. It shall accomplish its task. You are born of God's word. Get stirred up in the word of God. For the spirit of God will take that same word and release from within the faith that is required to change your circumstances. Hallelujah. Okay. Come on if you can. Just stand up with me. Could you raise your hands just... And just start giving thanks. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Father, we thank you that you have blessed us with everything. We thank you that you have blessed us with everything. We thank you, Lord, that your word is within us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Ratra mama mama shekhiridi. Thank you, Lord. Increase your word within us. 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 Show us what you see, O oh Lord, so that we can speak what you say. Lord, increase the word within us. Shakara thama mama mama, shara dada mama mama shekhere thi, dada mama shekhere. Increase the word within us. Oh Lord, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Increase the word within us. Ratra mama 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 shikara thala, shere thi, dada mama shekhere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If there's anybody here who's experiencing sickness in your body, just raise your hands, and I want, and I want the people around around that person to go and touch them. If you can see somebody raising their hands, raise your hands. If there's somebody who's sick, who's going through pain in your bodies, 
Raise your hands. Come on, do it, guys. Don't don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is your day. Yeah, come on. Just lay your hands upon them and just release God's favor, God's blessing, God's word. If anybody is facing and facing a challenging circumstance in your life, you're facing challenges after challenges. Just raise your hands. Yeah. Somebody who's around them, yeah, please feel free. Come on. Yes. Let's just partner, partner in faith. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, that your word that has been sent forth, it will not return void. It will accomplish its task. So we release your faith in the name of Jesus. We release your faith. We speak the healing of Jesus right now. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. Jesus has paid the price of peace on the cross. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. We declare peace be still. Peace be still. Anything that is missing to be restored, anything that is lost to be found, peace, the shalom of God, the shalom of God. I see restoration of families in the name of Jesus. Anything that has been bothering your family life, anything that is causing disturbance in the family, we rebuke it and we speak the peace and love of God. Peace and love of God. Peace that transcends all understanding. Peace that transcends all understanding to restore every family. To restore every family. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are not moved by our circumstances. We are moved by faith. We release, we release your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.